The, the 50 PSI is something that we use with our trach patients, patients that have a trach or a stoma in their neck. It's a way to provide moisture to these patients because when you bypass the nose, you're bypassing their way to humidify, to warm the air, okay? So um, a 50 PSI is something that these patients will use at nighttime, and they'll use during the day to provide moisture into their lungs. One of the things that um, you want to know about the compressor is it's very loud, and some of the patients don't like them because they're loud. So if I turned it on and tried to talk over it, I wouldn't be able to. You'd have to scream over it. So I'm not going to turn it on right now. Some of the parts that you're going to need is the trach mask, the corrugated tubing, drain bag to pick up any moisture that comes from the mist bottle, the blue connector, which you hook your oxygen to, which if they're on oxygen, you're going to hook it directly to your concentrator, and you have your nebulizer bottle. So these bottles are not humidifiers like you put on a concentrator. They're nebulizer jars, just like you produce a nebulizer with a handheld neb. You're going to get a mist when you put it out, okay? The nebulizer jars have a dial that goes from 21 up to 98. When you hook this up to oxygen, that's the actual percentage. So I could hook one of these jars up to a high flow concentrator and not have the compressor in a patient's home. And I could use my high flow concentrator to actually get the oxygen and then I would have to worry about what the yellow dial is on. We don't have a lot of situations where we do that. We usually bleed the oxygen into this. I'm not sure why. We don't have a lot of 10 liter concentrators is one reason, but if we do, we could do it that way. Um, so remember that a compressor, uh, the 50 PSI, is a room air compressor. It does not produce oxygen, so you have to have oxygen come from another source. And that's why we're using the Bluetooth to dial it in. With the 50 PSI, you're going to set the dial on about 70. That's usually pretty typical. It makes it a little quieter. When it's opened all the way to 23%, 24%, it makes a lot more noise. It entrains a lot of room air, so that's why it's loud. And we want to dilute some of that room air out, so we kind of close the dial off to 70. So it just puts in a little bit of room air, okay? Otherwise, we're going to dilute our oxygen down, and they won't really be getting a percentage. So I have packets that I hand out to the patients and also to assist the drivers when they're setting this up that the dial should be on 7, depending on if they come out with a percentage, because a lot of times we see 28%, 26%, we need to convert that to a leader flow. We don't necessarily have to ask them to do that because we have a um, graph that tells us what to convert it to. Usually at 70%, and you put this on two, you have to control it with the 50 PSI setting at around 26 or 28 percent. The, the machine has a, a, P, a PSI gauge that regulates how much pressure it's putting out per square inch because it's PSI. I do believe those are PSI. So if I want to deliver more mist to a patient because they're drying out, I can increase this pressure to a higher number. But if I increase it way too high, I can drown my patient. I can overhydrate them. And that's not something we want to do. So it's really important that when we set these up, that the PSI gauges are set around 26 to 28. Okay, we don't really want to go any higher than that. If I do go higher, I'll go higher to 32%, but I have to remember it's going to dilute my oxygen a little bit. It's putting more airstream through. Okay, so I may have to shut this off a little bit or dial my concentrator up. And I can very easily analyze one of these to see what kind of percentage I'm getting. But usually I just typically check their SATs to make sure I'm maintaining their SATs. But um, I'm going to turn this on so you can hear how loud it is. I also want to see it. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it. But there's a mist that comes out of here. And if you hold it up to a dark surface, you can usually see it. I don't see it right now. And that's one way you want to make sure that it's working is to see the white mist. Does anybody see that? I can see it now. You see the white mist? Do you see the white mist? <laughs> and that's what we look for when we're in the field. <laughs> If it's not producing the mist, something's wrong. 
Okay, so we have to troubleshoot. Sometimes it could be that the 50 PSI, the, the um, gauge got moved. It could be that the jar is not screwed on good or the little white stick is not shoved up. Okay, until it's holder, shoved up. <laughs> or they don't have water in the bottle. Okay, or it's below the minimum because there's a, there's a line down there that says minimum and maximum on these um, nebulizer jars, okay? But we do want to see the mist. And the bag is just simply to pick up any moisture so we're not dipping it because if they rolled over, they could put the water into their trach or their stoma and that wouldn't be comfortable. Okay, any questions about the 50 PSI? I have a question. Sure. Well, today we're actually set up a patient on a nebulizer. Okay. That we just set up on that. How does that work? Okay, when you have a trach patient that's using a 50 PSI, okay, now remember I told you it's usually at nighttime and as needed during the day. Most of those patients are using a passing mirror valve, which is a speaking valve that they put over the trach, or they have a plug, which is just a cap that they put on the trach so that they're breathing through their mouth and their nose. Those patients can use a mouthpiece, okay? okay? If you have a patient that has a tumor in the upper airway and the only way they can get a mist or get moisture is through their airway, you would have to hook the nebulizer, okay, the HHN, the handheld neb, to this trach mask. So it would go right on there. You don't use any of the corrugated tubing. You don't use the T piece. You just use the jar, the lid, and hook it right onto here. So the medicine cap is going to connect to that? Yep, the medicine ca connect, huh. cap will connect to okay. these adapters. Now, there are certain nebulizer jar, uh, nebulizers for the handhelds that may not fit on certain trach masks. Right. So if you're going to do something like that, we have two different types of trach masks back there. We have several types of neb jars back there. You might want to see if you can connect them through the plastic. You can very easily just... Wiggle that plate instead of opening it up. I know this is like our second one trick patient within like a month that we mm -hmm. set up on another. Yeah, visit. most of them can take mouthpiece unless okay. they have a way, unless they have some reason that their airway is obstructed through a tumor, they're not able to breathe through their mouth. That's why they have a trach. Some people have a trach because they don't maintain their own secretions. Okay, so they need that to be able to suction because they're not able to cough effectively. So, some patients have trachs because they're sleep apnea patients and they won't wear their CPAP or BiPAP, so the doctors trach them. Those are more your permanent oh patients. God. So should the driver just automatically take the extra stuff out with them? Or? You mean for if they don't have an order for a handheld I mean, now? I mean, no, like okay. the extra like, tubing. The extra tubing yeah. and stuff if it doesn't fit on there. You know what I'm saying? For, uh, like if, if we, they can't use the mouthpiece. Okay. Well, I, I said yes. Yeah, but that well, they fits have, on the medicine okay. ball, right? Yeah, this will fit on the blue, okay. the little, I call it the acorn neb. Okay. But I'm not sure it would fit on one of the other ones. Like someone asked me about the permanent neb. Right. I need to go back there and see if that will fit on there. It should, yeah. but there are some that are funny. I think the other trach mask we have is a little different than this, and some of them don't fit on that. This is you, This is the Hudson. This is the one I like better. The other one's a little harder. I don't particularly like it, especially when it's up against someone's neck because it doesn't give as well as this one does. So I always grab this one, and I know those little neb jars fit right on there. And that thing will produce enough blow to nebulize the medicine all the way up to that? That's you mean th from where? You from down that? here? I'm not hooking. This is not medicine. This is just um, okay, distilled water. It up with the nebulizer. We're hooking it up with a handheld neb. They're both nebulizers because they both produce mist. Mm -hmm. It's just the handheld neb is going to go closer to the patient. Okay. I yes. didn't know that they were using a separate compressor. Of yeah. They, they can hook them in line. Like if, you know, a lot of times patients, if they're comatose and they're just bedridden, they can hook them in line, and a lot of times you'll see them hook them down here, which, yes, it's got to travel through all this, get to the patient, and they probably aren't getting a lot of their medicine. So I try to teach them to hook it up here with the T-piece, because it comes with a T-piece that's much like this blue adapter that will fit, but one end of it will not fit on here. This one will, because it's larger on one side. So that's the other thing you have to be careful of, is the T-piece from the handheld NEB set will not fit the two pieces together. You're going to have a have it a little short white hose, which most of them come with anyways, to hook to the mask. 